What's up, everyone? Welcome. We are live right now on Cannabis, and if you're watching us on YouTube, thank you so much for joining us. We have a great episode for you today. We're going to be talking all about infusions in the world of uh, CBD and THC edibles. We've got Damien from Derived Creations um, making a bunch of really delicious things. He was just saying he made he's made. Uh, uh, like edible cheesecakes and that made my i was like immediately distracted just thinking about the possibilities <laughs> um but yeah we're gonna be talking all about infusions and recipes and all sorts of things jr's got a great episode for you today but before we get too far into it i need to make some shout outs first off shout out to everyone in the cannabis community if you enjoy our episodes if you enjoy our youtube channel or our podcast feeds you can support us and keep things rolling by joining the cannabis community so search cannabis in the app store download our app use the code buzz and you will get one month for free and then after that you can pay as little as four dollars and twenty cents a month and it helps us keep things going and we send out all sorts of things to folks lately i've been sending out packs of seeds from neptune farms to folks that sign up on our little form that's pinned right at the top of the app so check that out we'd love to see you in there also shout out to lostcoastplanttherapy.com if you need a spray to knock down things like bud rot powdery mildew uh spider mites all sorts of things that are trying to attack your bugs or uh, buds both outside and inside Check out Lost Coast Plant Therapy. I've been using them, and I really appreciate their support of the show. And then last shout-out from me before I throw it over to JR. We're going to go with uh, shout-outs to sacred3mushrooms.com. A lot of people these days are exploring different worlds of fungi and mushrooms and whatever that form may take. And if you want to grow your own at home, Look up sacred3mushrooms.com. They have really great grow kits for about 80 bucks, everything you would need, and they have instructions. So if you're worried about it, if you think it's a daunting task, he's got all the videos that you can need. And then if you need to figure out how to source spores, he can help you there as well. So sacred3mushrooms.com and use the code CANNABUS at checkout. I believe it gives you a 10% discount over there. And then uh, yes. over to JR. Thanks, Q. Uh, now we'll do our Tiki announcements. Uh, he's got his blueberry snow cave. Uh, it's a blueberry snow cone, actually. A <laughs> snow cave. That's even better. <laughs> uh, it's a blueberry snow cone, and that's a, a Hawaiian snow cone by uh, Blueberry Z by Tiki Rain, which uh, we were just earlier talking about uh, some of the awesomeness that Tiki Rain brings to the table. Uh, and, of course, you get a free spooky pack with every order, uh, at NeptuneSeedBank.com. Um, and then for our Nugs Deep with Neptune Seed Bank, uh, his weekend deal for 927 uh, to 929 uh, is going to be the last weekend deal. So he's going to be doing 30% off of his genetics and 40% off of Neptune Farms and 50% off of Bread by 42. Uh, so check out NeptuneSeedBank.com and uh pick up some packs awesome well today we have damien from derived creations they're an east coast gourmet edibles company offering award-winning thc and cbd taffies and caramels we are so excited to talk about just like i was talking about things like cheesecakes and chocolates and all sorts of things we're excited to be talking about it especially with <laughs> halloween coming up so there's some excuses to make some things so thank you for joining the show damien I uh, appreciate you fellas very much. Thank you, Q, and thank you, JR. It's a pleasure to be in on and, and talking with the community today. Yeah. So um, we'd love to kind of give us some background on yourself as you join us as, you know, your first time guest on the show. Um, give us a little bit of background on you and how you fell in love with the plant and how that kind of led you to the world that you're in today. Yeah, man. So, uh, so back probably when I first got my first job, I was in restaurants. So I was always around food, but I was never in the kitchen actually cooking. Uh, I was always serving or bartending or food running, bussing tables. And during that time, I started actually not just only uh, smoking, but then I also kind of got in with some buddies and we were, we were growing as well. So I had some outdoor grows uh, that transferred to doing some indoor grows as well. So it was about five years of growing. 
uh, nothing fancy, nothing crazy, but uh, that led me to, you know, getting out of high school, graduating high school, and then getting into where I wanted to do horticulture. Uh, so I have kind of a growing background of, of loving the plant that way. And, um, you know, during that time, I never thought about getting into making the caramels, the cheesecakes or anything like that. Uh, but what I did do is make a menu and I figured, hey, I'm, I'm always serving tables, always serving dinners. Why not we do an infused dinner? So four or five courses, bring some friends, some family together, and then we can actually just make a curated experience with buds or with oils. Um, so that's kind of really the beginning of, of everything edible wise that we were doing. And really bringing those people together, uh, which was an amazing experience that I, still to this day, just that first dinner, uh, it really changed the game for for what was to come over the next seven plus years leading to today. For the folks out there who don't really um, understand or have had access to uh, these infused dinner parties, because they are actually incredible. Um, can you kind of give us a walkthrough of the beginning of how the guest arrives and the process and out the door they go. <laughs> yeah, for thing. sure. Yeah. So um, I, I actually, it, it was a, probably a Colorado based company that I first saw an infused dinner uh, by. Um, so really taking an experience where it wasn't, they come buffet style. I've seen some things like that. Uh, but really, if you were going to come to an infused dinner, like we were doing, it was four or five course. And, you know, when you first come in, we're going to get you settled down. You might be with a friend or two, uh, but most of the people that are there, you're not even going to know them. So it's not a dinner party where you know everyone there. And that really creates an experience where, you know, throughout the event where you're sitting next to these people, you're able to hear their stories. You're able to, to gain a new friend, whoever's sitting next to you. Uh, and it's really all love at, at an event like that. So we were smoker friendly at our event. Uh, and then also we we like to dose our edibles or our meals on the side. So as you're consuming through for, through the evening, there was olive oil uh, infused syringes. This was for, for one of our first events. And then you could dose your own on the side. And we knew, you know, each syringe might be 10 milligrams each. And then they could dose the event uh, as they get further and deeper into it uh, and as they're consuming as well. So it's not an overload. And in addition to that, then they can dose the portion of the food that they know that they're actually getting all that infusion. Um, so for that experience, get there, sit down, enjoy. You might light one up. And then from there, we're going to start off with, let's say, a, a gazpacho, like a cold soup. Uh, from there, you might get into our charcuterie board. So you can have your little mm. olive oil syringe. You can put that on a, a piece of toast or bread, and you can load that with the, the meats or the cheeses. And then we're getting into the main course. It might be a pasta dish with a protein. Uh, we, we like doing, a, it was a, our ganja parmigiana. So you, you get your, uh, your red sauce, your chicken parm. You have that loaded with the, the olive oil syringe. And then maybe we end and, and cap the night off with an infused cheesecake. So uh, an event like that, it's definitely curated. You're going to spend some three, four hours with us and, and enjoy a, a nice, luxurious experience with cannabis. And so now, just just for people to have an idea, what's the ticket to get in the door? Yeah, so funny enough, I mean, for my first dinner, I thought it was a crazy ass idea. Uh, so I was just getting some friends to come together for forty dollars a piece. I said I'll take care of everything, four or five course. Uh, so I wasn't making any crazy money because I was I brought in a chef that I knew that I had worked with, and I had some server servers that would come in as well. But now we're looking at seventy-five to one hundred dollars a ticket in order to have that fully curated experience. Everything is taken care of. All your drinks are being refilled. Everything's being taken out. You know, cleaned up in front of you between each course. Uh, so really driving home that that service where you're not going to get an experience like this every night. Uh, so we want to make it one that that you will remember. That's and cool. now that things are, now that things are kind of opening up, are you guys able to do like rosin pairings and uh, that kind of yeah. thing? I'm glad you I'm glad you bring that up. So I think at especially if this is something that somebody would like to get into, you can do it with four friends. You start super small. You can just do it for for you and just one other person and make a curated experience. It doesn't need to be anything crazy. Um, but being able to prepare uh, prepare a meal 
and then also infuse it with a terpene profile that matches those flavors uh, it is really beautiful. So you can do that pairing with the drinks. Uh, you can pair it with the meal and you can really blend that those cannabis uh, terpenes with the food as well. So um, you can do that. And I think as it progresses and you can really start pairing your options, it makes it even a more unique experience as well. That's a really interesting idea. Um, before we get to the question that JR wants to, me to ask you. Um, so, so let's see. So you would like create this like menu almost of terpenes. I could see where, you know, we've, um, we've had several episodes about one of our friends, uh, the white thorn rose has a very particular palette. It's like a strawberry oatmeal type of thing that it's kind of becoming famous for. And so, and then maybe you'd have something that's like tangy and maybe you'd have some, some of these other, I don't know, cookies or whatever it is. So how yeah. do you how do you pair that um, those real cannabis terpenes and the, maybe the flavors that come from those or or what are you I don't know I won't kind of preload the question what are you thinking about when you when I give you that um, palette of terpenes or what and whatever it, what form is that is that in hash or something like that yeah yeah um well. I know that it, I mean, this is interesting because you, you can consume cannabis in a variety of ways. So if you're just doing it for a dinner and you want to consume it by eating it, that would be different than if you wanted to pair it with, you know, you're going to take a dab and you're going to take a hash dab and really get those nice terps and you're going to pair the, the part of the meal with something with that low temp dab uh, of, of some premium hash and then pair it with something food wise. Um, but let's just say, for instances, for me, if it's all going to be food related, I want to take you on a journey with food. So as soon as we kick off the event, I might hit you with something a little bit more heady. Uh, and then as the evening progresses, I'm going to get you into more something like you're going to do more of your indica towards the end because that's going to be the nightcap. So I'm going to start yeah. you off higher and then you're going to go on a wave and a journey with us and then it's going to end off. So when you leave, you're feeling super relaxed. Everything is calm. You might have a little bit more CBD towards the end as well to kind of uh, bring everything together and, and mellow everything out. And then when you're sent off on your way, you're feeling really grooving and, and, and you know, you're know you going to have the best sleep ever because you just had a nice meal. That's so a cool I would idea. pair, yeah, I would pair, I guess, the flavors. It would really depend on the actual terpenes and what kind of experience I want you to feel uh and then as you ride that wave then then you can you can take that accordingly but i, like I, would, I would probably go that route mm -hmm. yeah i like but that i, I, I like it yeah i think it's I think interesting that's... with also the hash too if you were going to smoke because i have had events where people bring their rigs and they're 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 uh they're taking dabs but i've i think curating the experience where you can in, indulge in that at a like a micro micro level i think that would be really unique I think being able to also separate the effect because when you're smoking, the way your body metabolizes it is much different when you're eating. So if oh, you yeah. kind of pair up your dishes light with the smoke in the beginning and then give them a little heavy on the edible at the end to just mm -hmm. drift them off into, you know, like you said, a really nice relaxing. <laughs> yeah. And especially when you're doing an experience like you were talking about, I could totally see doing like during the appetizers, you've got like a blue dreamy type, like social mm -hmm. high or whatever. And then yeah. you go to something more stony towards the end. That would be really cool. Um, so back to the question that I was supposed to ask you. <laughs> uh, so um, oh, nice, so I, I imagine a lot of people I've come across, you know, through the years of us doing cannabis and, and, and just whatever you come across a lot of people that love experimenting with edibles and they're kind of, you know, they become entrepreneurs or they have that entrepreneurial spirit, especially when it legalizes in their area and that the things, the gears start clicking and they might want to do something like what you're talking about. What sort of advice would you give to other folks that may be thinking about, they like this idea that you're talking about. They like this idea of putting on an event where I'm creating edibles and I'm serving those to folks. Um, what should they be thinking about? So uh, I would say in any business is that it, some people, and I have been victim of this, is that you want to have everything perfect and you want to have everything ducks in a row. I need to have all these things in order to get started. 
And I have been that person. And I think that it's held me back from some opportunity, but it's also helped me develop and in, in knowing like, hey, if there's an idea, how can I act on it the most quickly uh, in order to just see if there's even a market for this? And there is a market. It's just how you're going to bring everything together. So I think that if somebody were interested in something like this, it's starting really small because if you create something really good, people will talk about it for you. So let's say they want to do private dinners. Let's do something super small. Start with yourself and see how that dinner would go and put that dinner together and what kind of things you want to have paired. And then when you get that dialed in and you're happy with it, maybe bring over two or three friends and say, hey, I want to, I want to have a dinner with you guys. This is kind of my idea. Like I'll take care of you, whatever. One, you're chilling with your buddies. And two, they can give you some really good feedback. And let's say it's for free because then they're going to give you that honest feedback. And if it's really good, then they're going to go tell a friend like, dude, you got to go wherever Q's house. He's doing something so different. So I think that that's kind of how I started with the dinners is that I, I didn't know if it was going to work or not. I just thought it was a crazy idea. Hey, this is a really cool menu. Get somebody that can bring that together for me that can really cook it all. Uh, Because I was more of the dessert guy, but I could bring some people and friends together. Um, So I think being able to start at that that smaller level, everything else you'll learn along the way and figure, okay, now I I might be dealing with the health department. Now I may be dealing with uh, bigger crowds and how we would collect payments. Uh, How are we going to market this? Like All that's going to fit into place, but you could be two years down the road still thinking about that perfect dinner when you could have just been putting on a lot of dinners in between that time. That's such a great advice. Yeah. I think, um, you know, myself included, you could get in your head and you're like, all right, how am I going to deal with everything that you just talked about the city? And where am I going to find like a restaurant that's going to allow me to do all this stuff in or whatever. And it's like, you're just saying like, no, just find a spot and do it and get some feedback and just start iterating on those ideas. Really great. Yeah. Yeah. And the, it, it, it kind of speaks to our trap culture. I mean, you just set it up as a trap, you know? And Mm -hmm. um, I love that idea of our community using the plant to diversify their income streams. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And pursue their passions. I mean, if you really love cooking and you really love, you know, bringing an experience to folks, that's amazing. uh, This seems like a relatively simple recipe business wise to kind Mm -hmm. of launch and get started. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I think that it's like uh, scaling or you're going to, Oh, I'm going to have to have two or three different crews in order to do multiple dinner events on Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Like let's not worry about all that. Those things will come because it's going to get easier as you grow. Uh, When you have more resources, you understand more things. And yeah, it, JR, when you when you think about the trap community, for sure, like it, it, when people can bring into their homes or in, an experience that, they, that their friends can't get at a dispensary, man, that that is something that uh, people will talk about. And if you make it extraordinary, man, it, it, it's to the moon. Right. So um, speaking of the moon, uh, the full moon, wasn't that recently? Um, well, the Halloween's <laughs> coming up uh, and we're thinking about. Um, you know, what folks may have and, you know, to look forward to from you guys Mm -hmm. derived creations with respect to Halloween. So are there any things like tricks and treats that you have up your sleeve for Halloween? Yeah. So, um, I can, I can break down a few things. Let's say you're going to make it at home, like blue Raz gummies. You can make it out of jello. Um, the jello that you get at the store, you can make gummies out of that, but you can make dirt. So you have your chocolate mousse, you have some Oreos, you can make a blue Raz uh, gummy worm, you can get the, uh, the, the molds on Amazon for cheap, and, uh, and then you can make your little gummy dirt recipe. So it'd be the infused gummy worms, and then you can put them in the dirt, and that's a fun little recipe that you, know, you, you, you want to eat a little bit more than just one little gummy worm. Well, you have the little chocolate mousse and Oreos in there as well. So that could be something fun for party. Uh, if you're staying local, staying at home. And then a recipe that we always love to to bring that's super easy is uh, you can get some brownie mix or you can make your own brownie, but we do Reese's. So we'll have Reese's Pieces we mix into the batter and then we top it with Reese's Pieces, put it in the oven, and then we chop uh, mini Reese's cups 
once it comes out of the oven and it sits for about 15 minutes, the top of the brownie is still a little bit warm on the back of your hand to touch. Put on your chopped Reese uh, Reese cups on there. And then as those start, they're not going to melt, but they're just going to get the chocolate set enough where it's just like stuck on. Melt some peanut butter, put it in a, I'm going a little in depth here, but put, put it in a plastic baggie, drizzle some peanut butter on top. It's delicious. And a, a, for a party, man, you could cut it up into little pieces and people will jam with that. So those are fun for parties. I always like to bring those out this time of year. That's amazing. That sounds so yeah. good. Those are uh-huh. great ideas. And so now tell us about Derived Creations and um, how that came about and some of the stuff that Derived Creations is going to be offering for Halloween. Yeah. So uh, so Derived really started from Infused Dinners. So we were doing Infused Dinners right before COVID. Uh, we started with 14 guests. We went up to 39 guests for a, a cannabis dispensary in, in our state. Uh, and then from that, COVID happened, so we stopped doing it. And uh, actually, one of the dispensary owners owned CBD shops in the area. So he was like, hey, man, COVID's here. You, you're not going to be able to do as many dinners, but I know that you make great edibles. So you know, if you brought these in and, and did it the right way, with lab testing and all that kind of stuff, I'll bring you into my store. So I looked into all that, got it all squared away and done what I needed to do. And uh, in 2021, we were able to start Derived. So we were making caramel and taffy products and, uh, you know, started submitting them in competitions like High Times Magazine. We were able to win with our sea salt caramel in 2022. In 2023, we won again with our coffee caramel uh, for, for best edible. So we were really playing that game, getting into competitions. And now from 2021 to now, we're starting to to dabble into chocolate. So we want to take our, our caramel and our taffy recipes that we've been sharing with stores and, and retailers and distributors, and then enrobe them in chocolate uh, to create another different experience. So we're, we're not changing the ac- actual products. We're just adding something new where we can, can make it a, a little bit more luxury of a product. So for our Halloween specials, we're going to start bringing chocolate products out. So that's going to be a, a huge thing for us as a, as a new product coming out. Um, and we're not I think that's, confusing. Uh, I'm going to stop you there a little bit. I think that's yeah. really cool because, I mean, how many times are we tired of just getting gummy after gummy after gummy, you know? Mm-hmm. To diversify mm-hmm. that that offering, I think, is awesome. And I hope that people are responsive and they should appreciate uh, kind of the efforts that um, go into all that. So we're going to move forward and talk about infusions and just kind of run down a laundry list of things that folks should know uh, when it. they're trying to get this stuff done. So um, first of all, when you're mixing your THC and CBD edibles, um, can you talk about the way those two kind of interact with each other? And then talk about them a little bit separate of each other in some of your offerings. Um, so are you saying how we actually infuse or how they interact with your body? Just so I have better understanding. How they interact with your body. Okay. And then the offerings uh, you have for each. Yeah. So when we mix uh, THC and CBD, we actually have isolated forms of both. So we have... We, we make hemp derived edibles. We have uh, Delta 9. We have hemp derived product. We have CBD broad spectrum. Um, we have CBN. We have a couple different uh, cannabinoids we use, but they're all isolated. Besides the broad spec, you get some minor cannabinoids in there. Um, but when we infuse them, we're putting them onto a, a rubber spatula. We're weighing them all out. Make sure that, you know, once we got the raw lab reports in, uh, that we're actually dosing appropriately. So when we send them out to get uh, fi- final with the raw pr- or the finished product lab tested, that they're coming back correct. So your 20 milligrams is what you're getting in that product. Um, so we're weighing them all separate, infusing them into the recipes and our caramel and taffy recipes have butter, have that fat in them. So it infuses really nice after a three minute infusion. Uh, and then in your body, uh, having a blended product we were talking about for dinners, that THC and CBD, it's going to give you that traditional cannabis experience, but it's really going to, the CBD is going to help mellow out that experience. Um, going to make you real relaxed and, and really just bringing all the cannabinoids together is better than just having something isolated. You're getting a little bit more medicinal properties and 
I know uh, we were talking about the RSO having, you know, really that medic medicinal effect in there. You know, it might not be the highest potency, but the all of the cannabinoids and terpenes working together, it, it just creates a really unique experience. So um, that's just THC, CBD, what we see. And, and for us, we do a two to one formula. So we have two parts THC to one part CBD, and, and we find that to be a really good blend. That's great. I would love to have been the guy that you just tested all these treats out on, you know. <laughs> My fiance loves to be that that person. So she she likes to take home all the product and try it and make sure, hey, Dame, yeah, that's okay. We can go with that one. <laughs> so um, on the topic of infusions, um, see, what kind of, I guess I'm curious, one of the things I'm curious about is where the types of material that you're using. We we did a yeah. a podcast about a month ago with a company called iPoppy, and they were experimenting with the types of extractions that they were doing, and like, okay. and it was really interesting that you know once you include like because you can have distillate because you can get distillate for real cheap, and that has its I'm sure its own uh, effects and upsides and downsides and all sorts of things, and then you can have like sure. the full extracts and and get the whole plant. I was just kind of curious, mm -hmm. what are you using? And then what are the common, you know, uses, uh, uses of this stuff that, uh, yeah, with, sure. with edibles? For sure. So, um, I actually, when I first, before I even started making edibles, anything that I would get tasted terrible. So that is something that I did not enjoy. Uh, I, I love smoking. I love the flavors of, of, of cannabis, but I did not like it in edible form. And I just felt as though that for me specifically, some people love it, but for me personally, um, it just really ruined the experience for me. So whenever I made edibles, I really did my best, even when I was infusing with flour to make it the cleanest flavor that I possibly could one to bring out like really nice cannabis profile but also that I could enjoy the edible too. So I know some people, they take gummies and they'll just pop them like a pill uh, because they don't want to chew them. So I don't like that at all. Um, for for us specifically with Derived, we do get distillates. Uh, we get isolated, not isolated forms, but distillate form of, of our product. And we blend in all of those different cannabinoids that we want to make the profile that we're looking for because all the flavor and the, the actual terpenes are extracted out. And we just do that so you can get the full flavor of the recipe that we're making uh, so you can enjoy that. And sometimes people don't even know that anything is in there. Now, the drawback for that is why it, for full spectrum products is that the full spec products, you're getting all those minor cannabinoids as well as the terpenes, which can really elevate the experience for you. So if you're looking for more of those medicinal properties, I highly recommend a full spec product uh, because it has some some of those little minor percentages that could really benefit the body. Um, another form would be isolate. So if you're doing CBD isolate, it's going to be like or CBN isolate. 99% pure. So for a manufacturer, it's great. You're not using a ton of product and it's super potent, um, but it doesn't have all of the minor cannabinoids that can really create an entourage effect and, and create a nice experience for medicinally. Um, so as a manufacturer, it really depends on what you want to offer your, your customers. But as a consumer, man, what kind of experience do you want? What are you really looking for a product for? Um, do you want something where you can like let's say a hash product you want something that you can really taste all those nice terpenes um and get those real medicinal effects or are you looking for something that you don't taste as much but you're eating on a more consistent basis it just really depends i could see where you're trying to have consistent dosing and yep. dealing with testing because testing is not cheap and so if you have a pretty reliable way you could break <clears> things down to where you're not killing yourself getting things tested mm -hmm. all the time. It seems like it would make a lot of sense. Um, uh, one thing I'm seeing and that I think is really interesting, and I'm sure the prices will have to come down before it's probably viable in a business perspective, is these uh, uh, full-spectrum rosin edibles. Mm -hmm. uh, just using the actual rosin from the plant to create the profile of what you're presenting. Um, I think that's pretty interesting. And another thing I wanted to talk about is I'm also seeing now like uh, these blendings 
of what would be your traditional cannabis edible being blended with like lion's mane or mm -hmm. some of the other reishi or some of the other mushroom gummies. Um, yeah. Are you seeing that kind of pop up around you? And is that becoming something on your radar? Yeah. So, uh, so actually we have looked into doing that with, it more of the lion's mane, the reishi, uh, cordyceps, and some of those products. We're trying to find a resin form because a lot of these extracts I want to put into product, it's powdered. So it's going to, it's going to change the, the texture, the consistency, the mouthfeel of a product. Um, but yes, there's a lot of benefits to having a lion's mane in with your CBD and uh, some other cannabinoids that you want to use. And we actually offer products to coffee shops. So it, having those mushroom extracts, those benefit mushrooms in there uh, with CBD, you know, testing that market, we have seen brands do that. And and just to walk back, you were talking about like your, your rosin, full spec rosin or live resin. Right. I have seen brands do that. And it creates a really unique product line when they can match up uh, like live resin strains and then you can put it into an edible. Uh, I think it's a super awesome thing people are doing with products like that. That's yeah, super interesting. That's what that episode with iPoppy, they were doing full rosin um, extracts, I believe it was. Um, super yeah. interesting. If you can find the right source in terms of the, the flower that has the taste and the effects that you like right and that you can put that into edible right. form um and and go ahead. and i just I, I don't mean to cut you off q but J jr I, I do want to go back to also the i guess the 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 way that people are getting the the products um when you're able to get a reliable source it changed the game for me because then i know that the customers that are coming back to us that i can offer you the consistent experience today and then three months from now or nine months from now, when, when you're purchasing another product that I can provide that for you. And when I was doing all herb infusions, it was hard because you're decarbing your bud. Sometimes things change. You're not getting as good of a decarb. And then maybe the THC percentage is different. And then the cannabinoid profile is different. And it, you're getting a different experience every time. So that is another reason I use some of the extracts just so we can dial it every time. Uh, and keep it consistent. And I can say for the home user, um, if you have a the ability to make RSO, or you have like a source turbo or an extract craft machine where you can do uh, your ROS or your RSO as your input, uh, you cannot decarb your material before and decarb it after in a magnetic stir. So that way you're not dealing with the breaking up of the dry baked material that's going to put more contaminant into your edibles. Also, if you get your RSO, you could ha add things like hemp seed oil to it to kind of dial it down and maybe get a batch that you could even send off like our local lab here, I think for 80 bucks, will give you a potency and cannabinoid profile. And you could just be any old Joe, you know, you don't have to be a licensed business. So, I mean, you really can get these things dialed in on the home level and mm -hmm. uh, do some uh, uh, cool stuff. So um, how how do you kind of recommend that if people are using like a hash or something um, that they kind of dose their edibles? Um. I was actually, I was recently talking with somebody that had butter. Um, they had infused butter. So, and for anybody that wants to make butter, I can just, you can, if there's any show notes or anything, email me, I will send you how to make butter. No problem. Uh, just some procedures in order to do that and, and get a clean, clean uh, infusion on that. But when you're at home, the most important thing is to just keep your, your procedures the same every single time. So that you can mitigate some of the risks in between. So if if we're going to use a hash, I've never made edibles with with hash before, so I can't speak on that. Uh, but for let's say bud, uh, my my experience from that is that I would I would even get down to how much butter I was using. I would weigh everything to the gram. Um, I would make sure that my procedures stayed the same every time that I made it, and then also I wouldn't 
make a full batch of something until I knew kind of what that potency was like. So I'd make something smaller. If you're using a uh, butter infusion, you can even weigh it out on a little scale and put it into some pasta just so you know kind of what, let's say, 10 grams of this butter is going to be like. And then when you put it into a full batch of uh, brownies or uh, if you wanted to go do cheesecake, whatever it might be, you know how many slices that makes. Hey, let me add 100 grams because I got 10, 10 pieces. Um, so really the, the weighing of things really help making that consistent infusion. That's interesting. Yeah. I've, I've dabbled in this stuff at home. Um, like pretty low fi tech, you know, decarbing in the oven and then throwing it in a crock pot with, um, you know, MCT oil. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, I haven't really messed with butter. Is that what you recommend folks kind of when they're experimenting at home is, uh, make the butter in particular, you were just saying earlier to email, to get a, to get tips on it. Yeah, so we uh, I like to do either butter or olive oil. We've done tinctures. MCT oil is another great fat to infuse your your herb into. I've done alcohol infusions as well, um, like your green dragon type. Uh, but I would say for the most part, the olive oil and the butter, I got the most consistent results. And it's it's something that's predictable. So for for me, for edibles, I always use unsalted butter so that you can add your salt in later in your cook if you need it. Um, and olive oil is more of that tasteless oil if you just get something that's refined. Um, you're not getting your extra virgin olive oil, um, especially because you can keep it up at a higher temp. So both of those, um, I would say, are, are pretty good infusions and low and slow. And, they, and then it'll make sure that nothing's getting burned for you. Okay. Nice. And uh, what about like using like a clarified butter to be like basing your steaks and stuff like that with? So what I recommend for people is that is something that you can definitely do, but it, you also have to consider that you could cook off the actual THC and cannabinoids if it's in a saute pan. So if I'm oh, using olive okay. oil, if I'm using olive oil or butter, um, it's fine to put it on something that's hot. But if you have a saute pan, that saute pan to be over 200 degrees, which is fine. It's not going to cook it off, but I mean, if you keep it on there, it's just going to burn off your THC. So, um, I don't, I wouldn't recommend doing that, but you can do it. Um, I always like to have that even consistent dose and then say, Hey, you can put this as a topper on your food after it's cooked. Let that butter melt on, uh, after you've already used clarified butter and gotten all the herbs and flavor on there for you. Yeah. Um, I thought that was a really interesting point that you made at the top of the show in terms of how you approach it, where you're letting people dose it themselves and add it to food that you've already <clears throat> made instead of mm -hmm. me adding the weed into the food um, as a part of like the baking process or whatever it might be. That's a really interesting mm -hmm. idea um, to kind of both give the user control over their experience as well as um, helps you kind of control the flavor of the food i would imagine um yeah really interesting and i think i think i think too it's like a lot of people like to have that control and they want to know that hey i i, I want to eat everything that you have to give me right now with all the infusions but like i want to make sure i'm getting it all so that's where it's like you can make the infused sauce you can make a really fancy sauce that you're actually going to put on the meal but just have that little that little extra bit on the side where that this is the all the infusion so um, you know, they can keep better track of that. And I think if you're looking for, we're talking about dinners again, really luxurious experience. Hey, you don't need to have that on the side, but I always like to just have it so people can dose up or down the event as they please. I think it's brilliant. Mm -hmm. and that little dad, man, you start sweating and everything. Like, hey, I got to take this, this course off. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, uh, so now I, I, I I'm sorry. One of the things that we wanted to talk about, um, and we mentioned it a little bit before, um, is those the idea of cannabis infused sugars and salts. Yes. So I, 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 as I mentioned, I have never made an infused sugar or salt before. Um, I've seen interesting stuff with like oyster crackers. And then you do like a Parmesan kind of spread with olive oil on top and you mix it in. 
But with sugar or salt, uh, I, I was doing some research before hopping on here with you guys is, you know, you can make your tincture like he was saying, let's say you have your, your cannabis tincture, and then you can lay out your salt and or your sugar, and then you're putting and mixing in that tincture in there. Um, some people, depending on the amount of alcohol you use, they put it back in the oven to cook off the alcohol and like a low temp. So you're further decarbing, essentially decarbing it more. Um, and then it also gets that sugar a little brown. So it looks like, uh, like rock, rock sugar almost kind of, uh, and then that that's perfect to put into a, a beverage cause it's going to melt right in there. Uh, also if you want to just use it as a topper or something like that, uh, that's as far as the experience that I have with with sugar or salt. Uh, I, I would love to, to I would love to use it now now that somebody else is bringing that up. Well, I think that's I had in my mind like there'd be a cube and you would just dose it like LSD, you know, like dosing the cubes. You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, you have your tincture, man. I mean, you could just put that on my top and then and mix it in. So, well, um, we're going to talk about drinks real quick. So I. I'll share a story. So I got a drink recently. It was some dispensary that I bought from. Sometimes they'll hook you up with deals, right? And I got this like yeah. $8 infused tea. I think it was 100 milligrams in a can. And uh, dang, that thing did the trick. Um, it The next morning, I actually felt like a weird sleepy hungover, which was really... Yeah, yeah. weed over. It's called yeah. a weed over. Yeah, dude. It yeah, is man. very interesting. I was like, if you want to make sure that you sleep through the night and then like sleep in the next day, which, you know, with a baby I haven't done for a while, I could see that, you know, having its place. Oh, yeah. But um, anyways, with, uh, with, with drinks, <laughs> back to you. Um, have you experimented with making infused drinks and do you have any sort of tips for folks that might want to dabble in that? Yeah, man. So, uh, so I have, so I'll tell you my experiences and I'll tell you some other, other things like players, like what you had that are doing it really awesome, uh, with drinks as well. So, uh, I've made tinctures and I've added that to drinks, shake it up. Great. Drink it. Does the, does the job amazing time. Uh, something that, I also thought was interesting is that if you take a, like, I, let's just say I was using a distillate for this, um, alcohol, like if you use Everclear, it's, it can be room temperature, but it acts as a heating agent. So that distillate actually melts into the alcohol. Um, and you don't need to heat it up at all. So I did that. I made, I made my tincture that way and then dosed out the drinks. But since can cannabis is, is hydrophobic it's actually going to break away from water so what i saw when i put it into the drink and mix it up after a while it did separate so the tincture did separate from the drink um so though so that is because the cannabis isn't water soluble and it's not nano emulsified so water soluble probably what you had whoever manufactured it is going to have that that oil where it just disperses real nice in it just as if you took sugar and mixed it into a drink um, and then also you have something that's nano emulsified. So they take the little molecules and make them really small and then it infuses real nice. So if you put water and oil together or we have water and oil together, it mixes in. Um, so if you're buying that nano, you, that nano stuff is the stuff that'll get you, man. Yeah. And you add that, oh, with yeah. you add that with carbonation and the way that your stomach intakes that is super fast. And oh heavy. yeah. So if you if you see or the drinks are going to hit you really quick because it, you're it, it's more bioavailable for your body. Your body can use it better. Um, and then also if you get gummies and they say fast acting, it's because it's nano emulsified. So it it it's not that ten milligrams is stronger in this edible. It's just your body can use it more effectively. So when you and you have that hundred milligram drink, that thing hits hard, brother. And uh, it's just your body's able to use up everything that that plant has to offer for you in there. Yeah. Is that is that tech, the nano emulsification? I've heard of it before. Is that something that everyone can use? No, not there's like no company that's like has a patent on it and only they can do it or something like that. No, everybody can use it. And I think that like you, if you had like, a, um, oh, man, I, I forget what they're called. It's like the. It, 
like an immersion blender, you can make nano emulsifications. So you can just get it from a, a restaurant store or online. You can get okay, cool. one of those pieces of equipment and then you can make up your little batch of drink and it's going to nano emulsify all the molecules in there. So um, whatever science people are doing at these labs, they're really smart above my pay grade. But, uh, but you know, I've seen water soluble and nano emulsified uh cannabis and and really that it's either in liquid form or powder form that i've seen so it just depends if you're going to buy it straight but you can make it yourself cool yeah I, mm-hmm. where that co- i was coming from sorry jr to cut you off was just that i've seen a an edible company out here in the bay area i forget which one they made their name early on kind of talking about this tech but i was kind of worried that they might have it and no one else could do it but i'm glad to hear that this is technology that other companies or and or even a home user could incorporate into their edibles so that we can all benefit from it well that that's the thing i i was bamboozled because there was a cannabis company years ago that i heard about and they're like this is the the heat technology our gummies they don't melt it's great and the, the way that they were marketing, I was like, man, they got some secret tech out there. And then it's like, no, they're just pectin gummies. That's it. So they can withstand 180 degrees, be in your car. It's completely fine. They just use pectin. It's not anything special that they're doing. So some people like to market things really crazy. But but yeah, the home, the home person, you can make pectin gummies. They're not going to melt in your car, which is great. And, uh, and then also na- nano. You can make a nano drink for sure. You get an immersion blender. Okay, so while we're on the uh, uh, subject of uptake, um, have you played around with any of the sunflower lithocin or that stuff? Yes, so that's actually huge for us is uh, we use the sunflower lethicin in our caramel and taffy products, and we also use mono and diglycerides. So both of those are emulsifiers. So one, it's going to bring the ingredients together and homogenize them or bring them as one way better. Uh, you won't get oil out or anything like that, or at least it won't be as prominent. And then the can- cannabinoids are going to be more uh, bioavailable in your body. So you're going to get something that is going to work way better because your body's going to be able to break it down. So uh, we don't use soy lethicins in our product just because of soy allergies. So we stick with sunflower. And then uh, we've been using the mono and diglycerides to get a better chew for our product. It won't stick to your teeth as much. It, it has better stand up, which means that the the candy just won't melt out. Um, so that helps. And then also just for, for people being able to uptake and, and have a better experience. So is it again, like we spoke on before, it's not about you're offering more in milligrams. It's just the milligrams that are being offered are able to be uptaken much faster yep. in a way that a plant would uptake. Biology. Exactly. Exactly. So like sometimes like edibles, they will it's different from smoking smoking right away you're getting effects within the the first two minutes edibles might take 45 minutes to an hour or longer uh for your body to to break down and digest and and because of that you get some loss um but they do they are can be stronger and they are longer lasting so um you know just making it more effective for your body to, to uptake is important for sure And then do you have any um, kind of on the tip you just mentioned longer lasting? So you made me think of it. Do you have any thoughts on um, how if I make a a delicious edible treat, what is the shelf life of something like that? Both in terms of, I guess it I mean, I'm sure it depends on the food and how long it lasts, but also in terms of the uh, the potency. Do I need to make sure I eat this stuff really quickly to get the full effects or or, (laughs) what do you what do you think? Oh man. So I actually get asked this pretty often, but, uh, I think cannabis ages like fine wine and I think it's great if it's in an edible, but the edible might deteriorate and it might get some mold or bacteria on it. It might not be good. Uh, the gummy might be a rock, but, uh, I don't, I don't think that it actually loses potency since it's infused into the, uh, the actual product. I know for dispensaries, they have a year shelf life regardless of the product. So if it's not sold, it within right. one year of the manufacturing date, then they discard it to green waste. Um, but I would say with any edible product, try it out. Like I, I like making non-medicated batches, just one to make sure that they actually taste good. And then two, like how long does it actually last? So, um, you know, that cheesecake, we made cheesecake, man, that, that cake's only good five days in, in the fridge, but three, four months in the freezer, it's still fresh. 
uh, the Rice Krispie treat might not last that long. How long will, will the actual treat last? The, the, uh, the infusion isn't the, the worry in there. Right. Makes sense. Mm-hmm. So let's move on to talk some chocolate. Um, cause I know bringing on chocolate is a whole nother skill set. And so, oh, yeah. uh, tell me about being a chocolatier. Oh yeah. So, uh, I, I actually, I go to a lot of these events. It's called, uh, RCI. So it's retail confectioners network. Um, and they do chocolate or caramels and it's just regular candy making. So I go there just to learn, uh, different things about candy making. And I actually just got back from a class last week and it was a lot of, uh, chocolatiers and they would take candy and enrobe it, which is exactly what we're, we're looking to do. But you are very right. It is a completely different skill set, and uh, it, chocolate is very finicky. So, if it doesn't have the right environment, if you don't temper it right, if you're do- dealing with real chocolate, uh, it can significantly impact the end product. And uh, you know, if you don't, if you don't have the the chocolate perfect, it could look like it has mold on it, but it does not. It's just called fat bloom or sugar bloom. Um, and it's just like going to be white moldy looking things on the chocolate, but it's nothing wrong with it. Um, so for a home cook, let's say we're going to make some chocolate. Don't use the, uh, the stuff that you would put into your cookies, like your, your, your little, uh, chocolate, uh, morsels, but that's not what you want to melt down. Um, you could use a coating chocolate, like gear deli has coating wafers, uh, has cocoa butter in them. Or you can do uh, regular chocolate and work with tempering it and seeding it and everything like that. But, I mean, if you use coating chocolate, it's going to melt down great. You're not going to have to deal with all the tempering. Um, it has the the fat that you need so the cannabis melts into it. Uh, and it would just be a great infusion you can do as a starter. So uh, that's what I would recommend. But if you want to get into tempering, just look up some stuff on YouTube and uh, and try it out without any cannabis in it first. Make sure that that it, <laughs> you, you, you getting it getting it done right, and then uh, and then from there you you know you can make it happen with chocolate. And That's what awesome. if you're trying to bring in like um, you know like different flavorings of orange or mint or something like that? Uh, what how are you going to get that into the chocolate? Yeah, so um, you could add different flavoring. So you wouldn't want to use anything water-based because water will seize up chocolate. So it'd be more of an oil base. Uh, you could put zest in there as well. Um, but again, you just want to reduce the amount of moisture, that uh, the most amount of moisture that you can. Um, so for us, for example, when we are enrobing the chocolate we're just taking chocolate and putting it on the outside of of our products but if you want to do like chocolate bars you could mix it in right with the chocolate there um and add in whatever flavors or once they're already molded then you can add your little flavorings and toppings on the back of the bar and then you can get like you know freeze-dried fruit it's not adding any moisture that's that's kind of smart that's really cool yeah that'd be Mm -hmm. cool because you get that element of a fresh natural product along with the chocolate that's yeah that would really be nice yeah yeah. So, uh, you know, you take some uh, freeze dried strawberries or raspberries, add it to your dark chocolate or your milk chocolate. I mean, it's going to make a really great product for you. So um, since we're coming up on the end of the show, my last question would be more kind of thinking about the future. I was just looking at the calendar. Holy crap. We're almost at the end of the year. Um, <laughs> so as you think about next year and with your business or maybe what's going on, uh with cannabis legislation or maybe just in your neck of the woods things are changing what are things that you're excited about in the months in the year ahead that you know that are on your horizons yeah so i mean let's just if i'm starting from today being able to hop on with people like you guys who are actually out doing this for the community putting together uh podcasts so that people can learn being able to share that kind of information so that not only other people can learn, but talking with fellows like you, I can learn something as well. I think it's super powerful and being able to now where, you know, the, the stigmas are, are coming away from the plant where I can actually do this. And I don't feel like I'm going to get in trouble is fantastic. So starting there for one is huge. And I really feel like I'm in the education business. Um, and being able to tell people, you know, how these, these this plant can actually benefit them. Uh, but for the business, 
throughout the rest of this year, we're going to dial in uh, chocolate products and, and create that different experience where it's not like a chocolate bar, but something that you can eat and, and really enjoy with a, a caramel or a fruit chew. And then uh, we're actually looking to possibly open up retail locations so that people can come in and get an edible experience. You might be able to get your flour or your, your vaporizing products, but you'd be able to also have somewhere where you have dedicated staff that they know everything about these edible products and, and different blends for you as well. Uh, so I'm looking forward to wrapping up the end of this year, but really excited to see if legislation works out for, for the industry for hemp derived products. Um, Every state is having different legislation. And for those of you that don't know, there, there's always a fight going on in a different right. state, and it may even be yours. Um, so these hemp-derived products, even CBD was about to be outlawed in our state, uh, even broad spec products. Um, so it's just crazy that the people that don't know what this plant does and don't know that there are non-intoxicating cannabinoids are trying to ban and outlaw them where they're actually having significant benefit to people. So, um, you know, hopefully as the fight continues, we we're building a strong force of people that, you know, we can keep doing this. And if not, there's always going to be another way, um, you know, and, and getting into a different market and helping people with this plant. So yeah. looking forward to that for sure. That's something that we try to spread with our show. Um, on our, it's kind of a recurring theme on a lot of our episodes is we encourage people to stay plugged in. There's a lot of nuance with this stuff, just like you were talking about. I live in California. They're trying to uh, ban uh, products that are like hemp derived. I think they're targeting more of kind of the smoke shops that are selling, you know, questionable yep. edibles or whatever it is. But the point yep. is, is there's always nuance in this stuff. There could be a lot of good things, could be a lot of bad things. I don't know. You have to look into it and you can't just take it on face value. Same thing in California. There was like this stuff about, oh, there's going to be farmer's markets now. But then when you look into the details, there's like so many rules and all this kind of stuff. So it's not as simple as it looks, you know, and just stay plugged in and really make sure that your voice is heard so that we can make sure that people understand how this stuff impacts us and the 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 things that we do need and maybe that it sounds good but it doesn't really help and i actually do need to be able to grow six plants and it's not crazy to be mm -hmm. able to grow six plants or or whatever you know the topic it is that they're trying to fight with us about right and, and q i think this is, brings it full circle for our whole conversation is that again for the person that is watching this and let's say they watch this whole episode they've from beginning to end Again, it goes Shout back to the, to the <laughs> theme, to the theme that you don't have to wait to get started because there's going to be different laws and regulations that come up that's going to completely destroy this whole great plan that you've created. Just yeah. do it now yeah. and, and, we, make it, and make it happen. That's what we talk about a lot is people in our industry who are, have longevity are the people who can pivot. Adapt. Because it only takes one swipe of a pin for your mm -hmm. complete business plan, like you said, to be right out the window. And either you continue that path of legitimacy or you just go to the open market and say, you know, try to legislate me out. Because <laughs> right. uh, another th thing we talk about is them making all this legislation that they economically can't enforce. So uh, right. the what, more we're, we're seeing that now. Right. The more we're doing stuff and the more we're active and putting it out there, uh, the more of a headache we create for them. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. And well, that's a big thing where, OK, we're passing passing these laws, but yeah, we can't regulate it or, or we can't enforce it. It's it's pretty crazy. Well, um, before we descend into more and more um, me discussion. ranting. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say before we bait Jr. more and more, uh, we'll just say that uh, November. Uh, an election here in the U.S. is coming up. It's a big one, but it's also important mm -hmm. on a local level. There's so many things that are passed. There's Florida is talking about uh, recreational legalization. Um, there's a lot of things that um, affect, and not even just cannabis laws. It could literally be just like a judge that you're electing in your local area, and if they like cannabis or not, so or can, uh, central nope. city council member, county sheriff, so, yeah, city council <laughs> members, yeah. These are all people that get plugged into what they're talking about and what they're thinking about. But um, anyways, thank you so much, Damien, for your time today. Hey, we really hey, appreciate man, the conversation.
I, I really appreciate you guys. It's been an honor being on and uh, looking forward to staying connected with you guys. I really appreciate yeah. your time. Yeah, we'll have to have you back on on the, some of the holiday seasons to get us inspired. Hell yeah. Awesome. <laughs> we'll come up with a, so, some Christmas specials. Yeah, turkey, uh, infused turkey or something. Um, some oh, yeah. turkey that'll really knock you on your butt. Um, but um, well, awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time today, Damien. If you want to, uh, pe- folks want to learn more about you, where should they go? Yeah, so they can go to our website, www.derivedcreations.com. You can get on there. You get the email, phone number, anything else. Social media is all on that website. Um, and then we'll catch you there. So if you have any questions or if you want the the butter recipes or anything, I'll shoot those over to you. Just hit our email. Awesome. Well, if you enjoyed this episode, make sure to like uh, on YouTube, share it with a friend, let folks know that they can tune in to this show on Spotify or any sort of podcast app that they like. They'll find this episode and many other episodes on there. And as always, JR, growers Growers love. love. Peace, everyone. Have a great afternoon. Have a good one, brother.